Okay, I'm going to go right into the book of Acts. Let me set this timer here. Um, I've prayed about this. I was going to do Hebrews. I took some time off with the Lord and with family. Uh, we have a nephew whose wife is uh, very young. Uh, she's 21, and uh, she she her due date was yesterday for her baby. So we're all, you know, waiting by our cell phones for that call to be there for uh, uh, our nephew uh, Joshua. Uh, up in Grass Valley. Remember uh, in two, uh, August of 2012, he had requested that I do the wedding ceremony. They had taken a vow of purity. They're, they are really, uh, we are so proud of them. So we were up there this weekend and, and we kind of went uh, west for a while. My wife and I just spent the whole weekend just kind of getting out of the house. I unplugged from the internet. So that's kind of the update on that. Um, so uh, I would ask for your prayers for uh, Joshua's wife, Natalie, that this pregnancy would go smooth and, and that their lives be blessed with a healthy baby. It's a girl. So, and then uh, having said that, uh, I am ready. It's Minister Paul. Did I say that? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's Minister Paul. It's 101 p.m. Pacific. Standard time on January 21st, 2014, and the Lord has led me to do the Acts of the Apostles. And, and these are things that we should be doing in the Gospel of Mark. He said that, you know, they were sent out, um, and the Lord worked with them and through them with signs following. So the signs are following them that believe, you know, and it tells you what the signs are. Demons are cast out, they lay hands on the sick and they recover. You know, in the book of Acts, this is after they've uh, received the promise of the Holy Ghost by Jesus himself. This is what they did in their Christian walk for the church and, and for the Lord. And so this is, I believe, you know, uh, for us to also go out and do these same things through the same Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, so this is the acts of, of the apostles. So. But I want you to know it's not just for them, it's for us too. And so what I have this factoid here. It says, Jesus' last recorded words have come to be known as the Great Commission. Quote, Ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all of Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. 1.8 And the book of Acts was written by Luke. And a lot of people believe, I did a, a, some research on this, a lot of people believe that Acts and the Gospel of Luke used to be a, a one, uh, one book, but that goes way back, and I only want to talk about things that I, I can prove, and I can't prove that. But most, almost everybody believes that Acts was written by Luke. Luke was a physician, so his writings of accounts are very, very detailed. Uh, and that's why it's always good to read Luke's, Luke's writing because you get more details um, simply because he was a fisherman. Uh, not a fisherman, a physician compared to a, as a fisherman, you know. Different writing style, in other words. Uh, so Luke, uh, the, the book of Acts is the story of the men and women who took that commission seriously. Did you hear that? They took the Great Commission seriously to go out and be witness. And they began to go out and spread the news of a risen Savior to the most remote corners of the known world at that time. Each section of the book, chapters 1 through 7, 8 through 12, and 13 through 28, will focus on a particular audience, a key personality, and a significant phase in the expansion of the gospel message. As the second volume in a two-part work by Luke, this book probably had no separate title, but all available Greek manuscripts designated by the title Praxeus. Uh, that it, I'll spell that. It's P-R-A-X-E-I-S. That's Greek. Uh, it means Acts. Or by an expanded title like the Acts of the Apostles. In other words, it, it, just, it just says Acts. But what it, sometimes it's written as the Acts of the Apostles. Ac uh, Praxius was commonly used in Greek literature to summarize the accomplishments of outstanding men. 
While the apostles are mentioned collectively at several points, this book really records the acts of Peter and Paul. Peter in chapters 1 through 12 and Paul in 13 through 28. And now I am ready to go right into this. A lot of this is fulfilled prophecy. And when, when I fall upon that, because I have three Bibles here in my lap, I will let you know. So what he's saying, it, it starts off, uh, Luke's writing, he says, The former treaties I have made with the O Theopolis of all that Jesus began to both do and teach. <clears throat> That's a tongue twister, but what he's saying is this is the second letter. In a previous letter uh, to this Theopolis, he wrote about things that Jesus began to do and teach. So he's building off of a second letter. And just to confirm that, I'll show you the definition of treaties. And I'm just getting this from uh, another Bible. It's a, a written work dealing formally and systematically with uh, a, a subject. So, and then Theopolis, this is really fascinating here. Theopolis is the name or honorary title of the person in the Gospel of Luke and the Acts of the Apostles. So he's mentioned in both. So clearly this was a good friend of Luke. Um, and here's Luke 1 and 3. In Acts 1.1. 1, 1. Uh, but I, I find it fascinating. And here's some Greek uh, terminology if you're into that. W what that name means is uh, loved by God. It's in, And I found this fascinating too. It says both Luke and Acts were written in a refined coin Greek. So there was different translations of Greek uh, language. Uh, and... and, and what, what I really found amazing is no one truly knows that I've read about yet. And if you know, let me know who this Theopolis was other than a friend of Luke. I mean, there really isn't anything in the Bible that says, you know, kind of who he was. So that's that. So back to this. So he's saying, in the former, I wrote uh, to you, uh, Theopolis, you know, my friend, and loved of God, uh, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. He says, until that day. So in other words, right up until this day, what day? The day that Jesus said, go and tarry in the upper room and wait for the promise of the Holy Ghost and you will receive power. Remember that? Until the day in which he was taken up. That's Jesus. After that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. So... Remember, uh, there was 12 disciples that Christ personally chose. One of them betrayed him, Judas. And I don't know if you know this or not, but Judas hung himself, killed himself in the, the field of blood, they call it. And um, I believe we'll get to that in the book of Acts, where it hints at that and mentions that. And then they replaced them, and they drew, drew straws, and the lot fell on Matthias, the Holy Word records. So he replaced... Uh, Judas to keep it at 12, which to me 12 always uh, represents the, the kingdom government that rests upon the shoulders of Jesus. So, uh, and to him he showed himself alive after his passions by many infallible proofs. In, in other words, he made it undeniable that he was who he claimed to be. There is no excuse to not believe that Jesus Christ w was the Savior prophesied about in the book of the prophets. Being seen to them 40 days. Now I find it interesting. They were in the wilderness for 40 days. In, in, uh, in uh, Exodus. And, uh, and Jesus Christ fasted 40 days. Uh, you know before uh, Satan confronted him. There's a lot of 40 day things. But here's another 40 days. Uh, he re Jesus remained around on earth 40 days before he ascended. And speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So so here we go. You ready? So, and being assembled together with them, so Christ was with them, he commanded that they should not depart from Jerusalem. Now I find this fascinating. Jesus tells them, after rising from the dead, don't leave Jerusalem. But wait for the promise of the Father, which was the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Prior to that, they were baptized in, in water. Remember, he said, John baptizes you with water. But Okay, so which saith ye, ye have heard of me? For John, uh, here we go. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Now, we're going to really get into, I'm excited about this, the 
the uh, power. The word is Jesus said, you will receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Power in Greek is dunamis. Let me just show you this. And, and it, it's really like the, it's the miracle working uh, power of God. It, it's the power of God. Dunamis is the power of God. Uh, and it, see right, well, here it is right here. Dunamis, the power of God. But it, it can, with, with this power, you can perform miracles. That's why in 1 Corinthians 12, come on, get off of there. My day's been kind of like this with these uh, little distraction things. This is my third attempt at doing this video, actually. So it's strength and power and ability. It's inherent power. It's power. Uh, uh, let me find the miraculous power, uh, miracle power. The way it was defined to me in Bible school, what it is, it's the miracle working power of God. So he's saying you will receive that power. Let, let that soak in your brain. When they therefore were come together, they asked him saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And, and, and Jesus is answered. See, because he, he's saying you're going to stay in Jerusalem. We're going to have to break this down a little bit. And he said unto them, It's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. See, it's his power. Everybody always remember, we don't have any power of our own down here. We do everything through the power of the Holy Ghost, which was a promise to Christ Jesus. But he said, so they're, they're talking about Jerusalem and Israel. He's saying, no, you're going to receive power. After, remember that dunamis, miracle work and ability of God. If they only knew <laughs> at, at this point, at, after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And then here's why you're going to remain in Jerusalem. I believe he wanted them to start in Jerusalem. He wanted people to see this from right where they were at. And you shall be witnesses both unto me in Jerusalem where he said you're going to stay, right? Don't leave Jerusalem. And in other words, don't go out until you have the power and apply that to your life today. Don't go out door to door. Don't go witnessing to the parks. I'm telling you, until you have the power. And how do you get the power? You get baptized in the Holy Spirit. And in all of Judea and Samaria, and in other words, the whole earth. Man, he's building a church here through miracle signs and wonders. Hallelujah. And when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of them sight. He went up to heaven. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, Behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Angels here, right? And they're saying, you just going to stand there looking at Jesus? Are you going to go do what he said to do? It says, uh, which also said, ye men of Galilee. Now notice, you ever heard of Jesus of Galilee? This is fascinating. Why stand ye gazing up into the heaven? This same Jesus. Jesus, 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 which is taken up in, uh, from you into heaven shall so come in like minor as you have seen go into heaven. He's coming back. And until then, don't just stand there looking at the sky. Go do what he said to do. So they, so then they go and they go to Jerusalem uh, to Mount Olivet or the Mount of Olives, which is from Jerusalem. Look, the Sabbath day's journey, in other words, uh, one day. And when they were come in, they went up into the upper room where about look and it even tells you who's here Peter and James and John and Andrew and Philip and Thomas and Bartholomew and Matthew James and Alphaeus and Simon Zeliots and Judas the brother of James James being the biological brother of Christ these all continued with one accord now you know how we're all talking about unity 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 it, it, nothing happened until they came into unity one accord in other words on the same page so here they are they continued in this they did what jesus said and they go tarry in this upper room and notice this this is prayer and supplication does anybody know what supplication means i mean this is one of the once you learn what this word means your whole walk with christ will change because this is how we are to uh, see, uh serve christ look at it's it's the act, action of asking or begging for something earnestly or humbly. In other words, when, when you pray to Jesus 
It says, by all manner of prayer and supplication. In other words, being hungry for Christ. Look, Jesus, I got to have you. Jesus, I, I need a touch from you today. Jesus, could you help my family? Jesus, you know, with a passion. And, and then it mentions with the woman and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. And in other words, brethren and sisters in the Lord. I believe there was 120 up in there. And in those days, Peter stood up. And now, now look who's rising up to, to take a leadership role. The one who denied Christ three times. Peter stood up in the midst of disciples and said the number of names together. So he names them all, and there's 120. Men and brethren. Notice how it says men and then brothers and sisters in Christ separates the two. This scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was God to them that took Jesus. David in one of the Psalms prophesies about uh, the, this betrayal and death of Judas. For he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. And here it is, man, we're going right into it, praise God. I was going to go to my notes, but I don't really have much in my notes on here. I have it in my heart, man. It's just gushing out of me. You know why? Because I chose to follow the Lord's will and not my own will to do Hebrew, he, the book of Hebrews. So let's see if we can get through this in a timely fashion. Okay, so it says, Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity. You know who they're talking about? Judas. And falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and his, his bowels gushed out. If you do a study on Judas Iscariot, the betrayer of Jesus Christ, and the 30 pieces of silver, he hung himself in a tree. And that, that's what this is talking about. I don't know why they started with that, but, but let's find out, okay? Is this exciting? I'm having fun. You know, this, this, the Word of God is food for your soul. And how many people here are hungry for more of Jesus? Well, one way to do that besides prayer and supplication with a contrite heart is to get into His Word. You know why? Because it's all about Him. And it was known unto all the dwellers in Jerusalem in so much... Uh, as that field is called in their proper tongue, Alcademia, which is to say the field of blood. So where Judas forever, it, where Judas Christ betrayed Jesus and hung and then hung himself and, and, and bled out, uh, to this day is still called the field of blood. Have you ever heard the term blood money? That's what they're talking about. Or, you know, you got blood on your hands. Just think about this. It says... It says in depth, if you catch it, if when you're reading the word, and look this up and find it. Judas was was a thief, and and he had a history of problems. You know, you'd have to read uh, uh, Flavius Josephus, the historian book, to find out uh, uh, Judas's generational uh, lineage. Uh, um, but he was stealing money out of the money box. He, you know, and that opened the door, it says, and Satan entered Judas. Why, why did Satan enter Judas? Because, well, I believe he was, it was predestined and the Lord already knew. But he was stealing from the money box that was meant to go out and help and fund these disciples' ministry. Uh, remember when the woman, I'll give you another example. Remember when that woman, the woman at Jesus' feet, she broke this alabaster box uh, of some of the most expensive perfume and poured it on Jesus' feast and, and Judas rebuked her and said we could have spent that money on the poor. He didn't mean that. What he was saying was, man, that's money I could have stole. That's real talk. Uh, he wasn't caring about the poor. He, he was stealing. And that's why Satan entered him. And look what the end result of that was. By him just opening the door, he, he's now uh, forever perished in hell. And he's forever known as the, the, where he's buried as the field of blood. Uh, Jesus, G Jesus Christ, he said, why are you rebuking her? She's doing this for my burial. And they didn't have no idea what Jesus was talking about. But now they do. See, now they're under the, the, the Holy Ghost power. See, for it is written in the book of Psalms. Remember David. He's talking about David wrote this. And to, to some of you, this may seem like first grade stuff. 
But please remember, some of the people that are watching these Bible studies have never read this before. And I'm trying to do it in a fashion that everybody can understand. You know? And uh, I pray that the Holy Spirit would add a blessing, a revelation uh, to, to us, to our eyes and ears, that, so that we could be ministered to by this word. Lord, add a blessing to this word. Anoint our eyes and ears to be open in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to keep on going. Forget the timer right now. I feel a move of the Holy Ghost. So let us, So David's writing in the book of Psalms. He, and you know why they're doing this? In my opinion, see, the, the, the word of God is inspired. Now, remember, this is a letter Luke's writing. And who's he talking about? Peter. Um, and uh, uh, Judas Iscariot. And now he's referencing uh uh, David, King David, in the book of Psalms, you know why he's doing, you know why I believe this was done twofold. One, the Holy Spirit wanted to leave absolute evidence that nobody in history could ever dif dispute that this happened. He's naming people, places, times, and things so that 2,000 years later we can go back and say, yeah, there really was a Jerusalem. Yeah, there really was a Luke. Yeah, there really was a Peter. Yeah, there really was this field of blood right here in, 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 in this right here. And for, for the second reason, he's writing this is so for us to understand. See, it says right here, just Google this. Potter's field near Jerusalem purchased by the priests as a burial ground for strangers with the reward that Judas had received. So, sis, I just learned something. These priests took the 30 pieces of silver, if I'm understanding this right, and they purchased a potter's field, you know, uh, for poor people to be buried that didn't have no money. Because it says, uh, with the reward that Judas had received for betraying Jesus, which was 30 pieces of silver, and had later returned to them. So, it's, it's, it's making history here. But the second reason is that it's also tying in the Old Testament is Jesus Christ concealed to the New Testament is Jesus Christ revealed. Remember I said Bible always inter interprets Bible. And then, and then check this out. It says, let his habitation be desolate. It's a field of blood, right? And let no man dwell wherein. So, you know, no one's living in that, you know, graveyard. Amen. And it, it says, and let his bishopric, in other words, the position he had, let another take. And you know what? That was prophetic because that did he happen because Matthias took Judas's place uh, in the, the disciples, which are now uh, apostles out doing the work uh, of God. In other words, uh, Jesus is no longer walking among them, physically teaching them. They have been discipled and now, now they are apostles. And there's a difference. Wherefore of these men which had accompanied us along the time that the Lord Jesus went in out, out amongst us, beginning from the baptism of John unto that same day that he was taken up from us. You remember when G, uh, John the Baptist, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. You know who? You know why uh, John the Baptist knew that was Jesus Christ? And they were cousins for one. Uh, biologically, they were cousins. Remember, it wasn't it... Um, uh, it was it was J Mary and Joseph, and then uh, man. See now, I'm gonna get caught up. Uh, well, fill me in. You, you know who the uh, I'm trying to think of. Uh, uh, John the Baptist's uh, biological mother and father that were when they went and visited him, and when Jesus walked in the room in Mary's uh, uh, belly, it says John the Baptist leaped for the. The life of me, I can't think of. Elizabeth. Elizabeth and, and Zachariah, right? Am I right? Elizabeth and Zachariah is something. Um, so from the, he knew because God told him that you're going to, God, God told John the Baptist that you're going to know who the Savior was. And, and this in Israel, there's so many Jews that missed it. Jesus, it was written that this was going to happen. It was prophesied in the book of prophets they studied. And when Jesus came, it still bothers me. The Jews didn't recognize him as the Savior. Not all of them. But even though it was uh, written in the prophets and the law and everything, 
They didn't recognize him as Jesus, just like some people around me today. They could care less about the Bible or Jesus. They're living their life for today, and they don't know that it's an eternal life, and, and it, it just hurts my heart. But let's move on. Uh, some people just, they don't have eyes to see and ears to hear that Jesus was, and it's been that way since the, since Christ first walked on this earth. So, okay, so then the day he was taken from us, which we read about, they're given a timeline that uh, there must be one ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. In other words, Christ wanted it to be, like I said, he wanted proof, historical proof, that there was witnesses that could prove that he really did indeed come down here. He didn't want to leave no wiggle way out to say, well, nobody told me Jesus was here. It, uh, be, uh, so And so they appointed two. You know, have you ever heard it out of the mouth of two or three witnesses? So this is this is a teaching here. Look, And they appointed two. Joseph called Barsabias, who was surnamed Justice, which is interesting because my brother who lives up in Washington, he named his son Justice, spelled just like this. And I'm thinking Justice because my family has always been tended to use biblical names for their children. And uh, Justice is a biblical name. There you go. And Matthias, right? They're getting ready to replace Judas, in other words, which was prophesied by um, David. Anyway, and they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men. So look, God knows your heart. If you think he doesn't, there he is. It says it. Show us whether these two have chosen. In other words, Jesus, help us with this major pick. That he may take part of this ministry and not apostleship. Remember this because in in Acts 2, tomorrow, I'm, or if I do it today or tomorrow, only the Lord knows, you know, I'm on the Lord's time right now. Just I'm in love with Jesus and I'm thankful to be back on YouTube. I'm telling you, in Acts 2, the Holy Ghost is going to explode in our lives. I just can't wait to get to it. But I wanted to get one done today. From which Judas by transgression fell. So how did Judas fall and betray Jesus? By transgression. So what's transgression? An act that goes against a law, rule, or code of conduct. An offense, a crime, a sin. Just little notes. Fell that he might go to his own place. Yeah, to hell, man. Seriously, real talk, to hell. And they gave forth their lots. And the lot fell upon Matthias. And so now they go from being 11 to 12 again. And Matthias becomes the 12th one. They did everything decently in order with the approval of Jesus. So now they're 12. And we will go on to Acts 2 uh, probably tomorrow. There's something else I need to address. I got to get together with some other people and pray about it. I just want to tell you all is well with my soul. I am very happy to be getting into this book of Acts. Um, I think it's, let me see how many chapters the book of Acts is. It, it's going to be challenging, but I'm telling you, Jesus is going to take us through this. It's 28 chapters. And Hebrew was only going to be like 9, I think, or 11, but uh, 13. I'm going to do what the Lord has asked me to do, uh, Lord willing, you know. And I believe we're all going to learn something from us. I'd ask again that you pray as pray for yourselves, pray for your families, pray for my family, and pray for this ministry, and pray for everybody that listens to this Bible study, that we can come together in unity and in love to make it all about Jesus and not all about us. We want to be discipled too. We want to go out in the power of God. How many people here want to go out in the power of God? Well, the best way I know to do it is to dig into his word and learn what the power of God is and what Jesus says we can do in his name. Amen. Amen.